Hi, this is Kim Ann Curtin with the Wall Street Coach. I'm here today to talk to you about Emotional Equations, the new book by Chip Connolly. Chip uh, is an amazing human being. I was fortunate enough to do a workshop of Chip's out at Esalen uh, back in 07 when Peak, uh, How Great Companies Get Their Mojo from Maslow, uh, was his book. And he was doing a workshop on that at the time. Uh, I just have a real fondness for him and I have found his books to be so illuminating for two reasons. Because I'm an executive coach and because I work with people who are in the corporate world, um, I find a lot of uh, them have a really hard time, as did I initially, to allow their emotions and their professional business demeanor uh, to mix. They, they have a, a, a natural tendency to feel as though they can't come together. And what I think is so powerful about Chip's book, Emotional Equations, is that he is able to take something that is really an emotional concept, our human emotions, which we all have, no matter how much we try to push them back, and he gives permission, especially because of the position that he held as the CEO of his hotel chain, he shows people how you can bring the emotional side of you and the professional side of you together. He does such an amazing job at being vulnerable and yet using his intellect. And that just appeals to me personally because I'm a really emotional person, but I'm a very intellectual person. So if you yourself uh, you know, qualify, even under the intellect, I think you'll be surprised at how powerful uh, the, your emotions can be and how they can propel you and your success in ways you, you couldn't even imagine. That's what my biggest takeaway from this book is. Um, there's another quote from the book, a, a phrase that he uses that I really resonate with, uh, that's called fixed situations, not people. And that's also what this book does. A lot of times people who start coaching or who start to ask questions about you know, their life and the direction they're at in, in their 40s or so will think something's wrong with them. And when really it, there's nothing wrong with them, uh, even Chip talks about these, these particular challenges that he was having health-wise and just with people that really meant a lot to him and the, the things that he was seeing happen around him. It, it wasn't him who needed fixing, it was the situations, and again, his perspective of those situations. And that's what this book does a really great job at, uh, you know, tying together. Um, there's one particular story that really moves me, and I just want to share this paragraph with you uh, because it's just so powerful. And, you know, if you, if you know anything about Chip, you know he's a really smart man, had his MBA uh, from Stanford, and, you know, had a lot of brilliant advisors at the time of this major decision that he made for himself when he was first starting out in the hotel business. But he references Art Norcus. Art Norcus was a cantankerous band leader who owned the motel I was about to buy. He wasn't necessarily as schooled or as trustworthy as many of the folks who were stoking my fear. And, of course, he had vested interest in trying to convince me to take an awful property off his hands. But he sat in a gaudy suite of the motel, nursing his 3 p.m. gin and tonic, and unleashed this question on me. What's your biggest fear in life? I fumbled for an answer and blurted out, I guess being a failure. Art shook his head and gave me a sly smile. Then go get yourself a corporate job, Sonny. You'll feel like a success until you're about 50 when you'll discover, when you'll divorce your wife, get a young girlfriend, buy a sports car, and don a toupee. You'll show the world your success, but inside you'll feel like a failure because you took the safe path. That's why all those midlife corporate executives buy Harleys. It makes them feel like they didn't sell out. And Chip responds, I didn't know what to say, but I completely resonated with his message. And then he asked me, so what's really your biggest fear in life? And I asked his bartender wife to stir me up a gin and tonic. And I said, I guess my biggest fear is that I'll disappoint myself, that I won't pursue my dreams, that I'll suffocate trying to live up to others' expectations of me. And Art smiled and said, Chip, drop your fears. You'll be shocked at how it will liberate you. And on the other side, you'll likely find the love of your life, whatever that's meant to be. That's what this book did for me. And I know that book, this book will do this for you. Thank you so much for watching my review. Have a great day. Bye.